Welcome back to Crusader Kings 2 by committee. So for various reasons, which I've done a video detailing, so if you're interested, feel free to go and watch that. I put it up on the channel yesterday. Unfortunately, this series is coming to an end. It was only ever intended as sort of like a, a stopgap series anyway, you know, it's to fill in the gap that was kind of very suddenly left by Princes of Darkness. Um, so I was never expecting it to go on as long as it had, and I was definitely not expecting it to be as watched as it was. Let's put it that way. So instead of just leaving it there and abandoning the whole series. I figured, let's give it a proper send-off. Let's see how Lesser Estonia and the, the Moon Moon Dynasty survive if we leave them in a time lapse for a couple of hundred years. Let's see if they're still going to be there. Let's see if the Aztecs collapse or the giant Sweden collapses and whether or not we maintain, you know, power in this world as the only sort of feudal nation, I suppose. So let's give it a go, shall we? So we've been running around 70 years now, if I'm not mistaken, and basically, um, this is taking about 45 minutes. Normally I like to leave it about 200 years, because that gives you a good indication of whether or not it's going to survive. Um, however, you know, 45 minutes for this, this amount of time to have passed, it seems to be taking absolutely ages. So I think we dive in now, take a quick look, and maybe I'll let it run for some more afterwards. Oh god, there's no wonder it's taking ages. Look at all these damn troops. Jesus. Okay, so, the Moon Moon Dynasty seems to be in a massive revolt. And they've also grabbed up. They, they, it doesn't look like they've expanded too much, actually. Um, basically, they've just grabbed a lot of land from Persia. And that's more or less it. They've grabbed some land up here in the steppes as well. But uh, besides that, they haven't really done a huge amount. And honestly, not a lot has changed. The Egyptian Empire formed, which were Kemi before. Um, has anybody else feudalized is the real question, I suppose. Uh, what about you? Oh, yeah, they have. We've got some additional feudal states. But for the most part, it's all because of... Uh, it's all because of Estonia. Uh, lesser Estonia, I should say. Obviously, Greece. Now, apparently, Corsica is a theocracy? So it is. Yep, of course. Why not? So, let's take a look at the dynasty and see what's going on. So, they're in the middle of a massive revolt right now, which clearly they've they've lost. Um, Song the Lesser of an Estonian Revolt. Oh, dear. Well, I probably should have let that run for a couple more weeks. Eh? So, who is this dude, then? We've got Emperor Moon Moon... Uh, Yu Yi, the butcher of Lesser Estonia, so that doesn't inspire me with confidence. He's a tyrant, he's an impaler, he's uncrowned, he's dishonorable. Really following our footsteps, they've lost all the artifacts that we gathered up for them somewhere. So, how is he related to the main Moon Moon family? So, in terms of family tree, uh, so we are, we're here. Then for Moon Moon, Yu Yi, the butcher, is the, oh, right, he's the son of, a uh, of one of the daughters Oh, he's the son of the, the great-granddaughter of the character we left off on. No, wait, that was son the first. Where's son the second? Son the prodigy? What the fuck happened here? Um, so it was his son, wasn't it, that, that actually took over? Oh, right, so that was son the prodigy. There he is, right, son the second. So his line actually died out. So son the prodigy never ended up having any legitimate children capable of taking the throne. So it then defaulted to his brother's line. His younger brother's line, who... Wow, was that really the first person they could find? So, Emperor Sun's great... Great-grandson? Yuyi the Butcher. So, not even born patrilineally, born matrilineally here to... Uh, Moon Moon Theophanes the Mutilator. Who was apparently a bastard of House Moon Moon. We only know his mother, we don't know his father. Um, I wonder if I could find out. Hang on, if we go Char Info, it should tell us. 
Uh, father, father, father. Oh, we know his father. Hang on, we, we want to find out this dude's father. Oh, we can't find out because he's dead. That's a, a little bit of a shame there. So, he was obviously born to some random Moon Moon guy, and they got married because they're Zoroastrian. That's just how things work. Um, and she is just a, a, a randomer, basically. Crazy. So, then we've got, obviously, Moon Moon Yoyi the Butcher, who's in prison and has lost... Oh, pretty much about to lose everything. So, I should probably let this run for another 50 years before we really make up our mind on how things are going to end up here. Uh, Vukinland, obviously Sweden, massive, unstoppable. Definitely one of the two big giants of the map. I'd say... It's more or less a struggle between Vilkinaland, the Aztec Empire, and Lesser Estonia. However, with Lesser Estonia being in prison, they do have 27,000 men, don't they? And I don't think Sweden has, uh... Ooh. No, they haven't feudalized either, but they have a lot of men in their own personal domain. Yeah, they are very, very powerful. Probably much more powerful than uh, Lesser Estonia. Let's check the ledger and sort of see how things are looking. Um, we'll find independent states. We'll sort it by round size and see... The Aztec Empire and then Vilkin Land and then Lesser Estonia are much, much larger. In terms of army, though, the Lesser Estonian Revolt is the biggest empire in the world. That's really, really funny. Uh, so I suppose Estonia in total has the most men. We're the most developed, obviously, being feudal, exceptionally powerful. However, because they're tribal, it's much harder to tell how much of a true powerhouse they are. The fourth place is Venice, bigger than Vilkin Land in terms of men, which is very strange, although they are a. Uh, a relatively secluded merchant republic there. So they probably had a very easy game comparatively to most of Europe. Because obviously the Aztecs haven't messed with them. Italy haven't messed with them. And, and they're too far away from Vilkinland. Way too sheltered here. So they've actually grabbed some of uh, Croatia as well there. Very strange. Huh. So I should probably let this run for just another 50 years or so. And see what we can actually get out of the Moon Moon Dynasty. It looks like they're not doing too well. They actually might be dead before that 200 years is up. Mainly down to the fact they've had to pick some random dude to run the Empire. And he's in prison now, about to be uh, kicked out. So, I guess we'll wait and see. Alright, so I've loaded back into the Moon Moon Dynasty and Lesser Estonia. Let's see what they've got up to. Honestly, they're looking very impressive right now. They've taken almost all of Persia. Um, I'll have to watch these videos back and sort of see what they actually did. That's insane. And then, of course, we've got Vilkinal and Sweden there. It's basically not changed at all. Ireland's taken over most of the UK. And the Aztecs have actually tidied up their borders quite significantly. They've taken... More or less, it's a, it's a fight between Italy and Ireland? Okay, sure. For mainland Europe there. Venice, still the Venice powerhouse that we saw when we left off. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised that um, that for Shattered World, over the course of about 250 years, that it's this sort of um, cohesive still. Because with Shattered World, you generally find that because there's no Dijon claims on anywhere, because no Dijon empires exist, especially playing as tribal as well, um, so that everyone's forced into gavel kind, you find that it fractures much, much more than it has. But this is looking quite nice. You know, we've got some pretty impressive borders going on right now. Um... You know, India would look a lot neater if it wasn't for this major revolt there in the middle. You've got this sort of huge border from the Tibetan Basin all the way up to Siberia there in the form of uh, Zhia. I don't know how you pronounce that, but that's what I'm going to assume. Um, honestly, there are very few small independent states left. You know, it's like a little bit from where, obviously, the Lesser Estonia has fought these these random provinces in Persia. So you've got, like, the Masadid there and uh, uh, Zanadan. But they're the only real sort of small ones around the area. You know, you've got apparently Ireland. I was just about to say there's an independent state. No, 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 that's Ireland all the way down there in uh, sub-Saharan Africa. Of course there would be. Honestly, Corsica is about the only independent duchy that seems to be in mainland Europe these days, and that's partially down to the fact they're, they're a theocracy. Right. So let's open up the ledger before we actually go and check the Moon Moon dynasty itself. I mean, yeah, look at that. This is all the independent states on the map right now. That's it. What's that? About, about 20, 30 at most? Some of these are even, like, county-level titles. Some of these are independent baronies, too. So, very strange. Wow. I wouldn't expect the world to have uh, come together so quickly, but I suppose part of that, that is down to the um, additional Casas Belli added by CK2 Plus for rapid conquest and rapid expansion. That's insane. Well, there we go. Let's take a look at Moon Moon Yan the Hammer. There he is. Wow, look at this guy. Holy Warrior. He's got a rare artifact. Oh, they got all their artifacts back. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, apparently they got Sampo, which is the, um, um, it, it's 
from to my knowledge, feel free to correct me here. It's a legendary artifact from the uh, from the Cavella, Ka Cavella, Cavella, Ka Ka something like that. The, the Finnic sort of uh, the Finnish um, national epic, and it's it's apparently lots of mill that that produces infinite gold. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting into the. I don't know how they've got that. Similarly, they you know they've got the sword of Muhammad and Achilles spear. So apparently they just apparently like collecting uh, legendary artifacts there. Sweet, that's very cool. Um, naturally, holy warrior there. So apparently they must have led a holy war. Did they reform the religion though? They did. Really? Apparently they actually did, yeah. I wonder who was the... Because it can't be this family then. Otherwise, we would have seen... Yeah, 100% moral authority. So somebody restored it, but I don't know who it could have been then. Um, how do you spell it? Show. 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 I don't know how you spell it. Hang on, I'm going to have to try and find out who restored it now. Well, I've had a quick look through the family tree, and honestly, I can't see anybody who could have been the... Restorer of of Zoroaster in here, so none of them have the trait. Um, Sao Sao Shion, I don't know how you pronounce it, but the the person who basically restores the uh, the Zoroastrian faith back to a sort of reformed religion. Yeah, very weird. So they they obviously achieved it at some point. It could have been any character in the Moon Dynasty, and I'm not going through all 132 members to try and find it. Weird though. Never really expected that to happen, especially without us guiding them there. They seem to have done all right, and honestly, they've got 121,000 men, so. I feel like they could probably also kick Sweden in the nuts if they really felt like it. 14k. Let's take a look at the Ledger once again. So by army size. So at the very, very top then we have... Uh, yeah. Look at this. Lesser Estonia with 150,000 men. Aztec Empire in a, in, a, in a close second with 36k there. That's insane. Round size. We have uh, Aztec Empire. Still still way in the head there by 200 extra provinces or 200 extra uh, holdings there. Score. Oh. Oh, that's a sad sight. Um, we're like not even in the top 10. That's unbelievable. In terms of piety, Lesser Estonia, again, probably because of that restoration. Uh, Lesser Estonia as well. And then uh, in terms of gold, apparently we've got some independent count somewhere who's fucking rolling in cash. Who are you, strange man? Efficient domain. Yeah, no shit. National tax modifier plus 100%. Holy shit. How's he got 3,000 gold? Well, there we go. That's just CK2 things. This has been a really weird playthrough it's been an interesting campaign i think i will bring this format back and i think we'll see it with a little bit more balance because a lot of the goals were a little bit pointless um and a lot of the goals were kind of far reaching as well very very difficult so it felt like we were weren't really achieving much in certain episodes but that's my own fault for not putting a bit more of a limitation on it so maybe instead of having you guys set the goals i come up with two goals at the end of episodes and have you vote on it instead or we do it similarly, but I set sort of the outlines for goals, so maybe one war to declare, and you know, because it was it was a little bit of a shame when we ended up with the top goal being, hey, rename Estonia to uh, Greece to Lesser Estonia, and that was it. Uh, and then obviously the next goal would have been take every province on the Black Sea, which is much much harder relatively. So this was only a test format, like I said, it was only to fill a slot, but I feel like it's been a pretty interesting campaign. We've got a very strange empire uh, under the Moon Moon Dynasty. And I'll definitely be bringing this back in the future with a little more uh, refinement to it. Thank you for watching. Apologize for it ending, but obviously I've put my results up on that video. So if you're interested, go and have a look. And uh, this has been kind of a weird one. But thank you to the patrons for making this possible. Big Dick Timmy, Sean Thornton, Zachary Harris, Harik, Lucas Halting, Haydog, Croesus, Gabriel Vanders, Josh Lynn, Dean Tesla, Michael Mullen, Logan Thorne, Conspired C, James Ogilvy, Escape, Jackson Women, and Tyler Birch for their supports at the insane... So their supports? Sure, their supports at the insane level tiers. And a big shout out to Nathaniel Limburg, Brandon Wintoni, Necro, Phil and Felix, Deal, Princess Ugly Dragon, Nick, Noble Esquet, Lutchley, Zara, even Facundo Vasquez, Paul Master, Imperator Augustus, Jack Allen, Chancellor, Chief Palpatine, I'm the Lizard King, Luan and Thomas, Yoren de Vries, Euphrates, Don't Call Me 2 7, Jordan Campbell, Astro, Sedini, Joseph Beer, and Chris for their support at the sensible Patreon tiers. What a strange campaign. Thank you for watching. Goodbye, Lester Estonia. You've been a weird playthrough.